Okay, so this is part two of me showing you how I store images and different different mixed media related things. So these notebooks right here are other ways that I store things. I really like storing stuff in notebooks. I have two bookcases that have different kinds of things like that on them. One of them is for my knitting and crocheting and patterns are stored in notebooks that I printed off and use over and over and I put them in sheet protectors then I put those in the notebooks and I find that's easier. I, As much as I like looking stuff up on the internet when I knit I don't want to knit from my tablet. I want to knit from a piece of paper so I can write notes down, cross things out, because sometimes patterns have errors in them. So I find this is a much easier way to store stuff. Then the other bookcase has mixed media things on it, and these are the notebooks that are stored there. So the first one is a skinny one. This one is labeled ATCs, Postcards, and Minis. Um, this is, I think this is an inch or an inch and a half width notebook. Let me make sure you're backed out so you can see. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. So I make ATCs and then never send them anywhere. <laughs> so here is my collection of ATCs that I made for no reason, thinking that eventually they end up someplace, which they have not except for they ended up in here. This is the baseball card, for lack of better description. And I think that's pretty accurate, what I got them off of Amazon, is this is the baseball card holder. You know, it's got three, six, nine places, and you can do 18 because you can do back-to-back. -back. So these are how I store ATCs that I make that are waiting to go somewhere. Um... And I find it's much easier to do it this way than any other way that I've found. These are images that I drew to be used on ATCs. And I store them in here with the ATCs. These are minis. Oh, sorry. The glare. These are minis. That's basically, they're a little over a 2x2. Two two, or a 20, I guess is what people call them. Um, again, these are the ones that are a little bigger than a, um, boy, that glare is terrible. Um, a little bigger than a two by two. And some of these are watercolors. Some are uh, mixed media doodle type stuff. Uh, let's see, what are these? These here and this one are watercolor on watercolor paper. These... I'm not sure where these are on. Whenever I do... Oh, there's nothing on the backing. Usually I try to... This is cardstock. Usually when I do them, if if they're going to be something that somebody might hang on to for a while, I try to make the back of it harder. Like, I'll glue this onto um, cardboard of some kind. So that's all this is. This is just storage for ATCs. ATCs, that, like I said, that I've made or that I've received. Um, these ATCs right here. Oh, well, this is more difficult than I anticipated. Um, these ATCs right here are ones that were gifted to me. Um, these two are from Linda McCollum. This one's from Peg Robinson. And this one's from Lindy Lazard. She does not have a YouTube channel, but I know she watches. <laughs> Okay, so there are those, and I usually try to keep their addresses and stuff on the back, which I should have covered up in the beginning. All right, so I have an empty page, empty pages, and here are postcard size, um, ooh, geez, here are postcard size, and this is a photo, I think this is a photo keeper of some sort. It does um, six postcard size, and then it has this long skinny thing up here. Um, I used to keep stamps in there so that I knew where all my postcard stamps were. But since I don't send out that many anymore, I don't keep them there. And I don't want to give away anyone's address. Anyway, so that's how I store postcards and things like that. Again, there are postcards that I made that never go anywhere. <laughs> Alright, so that's that. And then I have extra pages in here in case of having more things. You know, I'm ready. 
I try not to generate any more ATCs because they never seem to go anywhere. All right, so that's that one. Um, this one. This is my iCAD notebook. Uh, index card a day. This was from 2017 because I did, I did do it. Never have done anything like that before. And I thought I would give it a try. Some of the prompt words, I actually had to look up in a dictionary. I had no idea what they meant. So these are all my iCADs. And this idea came from Cat Hand when she had gone to Tuesday morning. She talked about finding the um, these photo, these are like photo protectors. And it holds, has a play, there are five places on here, and I think they're four by six, but the um, index cards fit in there just fine. You just have to be careful that you don't jig them around too much or they do slip out a little bit. But this was the perfect thing that I, it's the only thing I could find that I really thought worked well. Um, I did look at the ones that hold this size for um, recipe cards and stuff, but I, I think this worked the best for what I needed it for. So there, there are all my... And see what if you tilt it, they come sliding out. Okay. So anyway, that's how I store the iCADs that I did from last year. I am going to do it again this year. And I really enjoyed doing it. It was a challenge that I really struggled with for in the beginning. And then after that, it was much easier to do. And I think the biggest tip that you can get from doing the iCAD is prep backgrounds first before it starts because it's like 61 or 62 days of doing a card. But it was fun. It challenged my ability to do something different every day on a card. There's a lot of collage in here. There's um, watercolor painting. There's acrylic. Um, there's a combination of mixed media and pop-ups like what you put on a card using pop dots under underneath images. I actually did a whole bracelet. Let me see if I can get this out of here. And I put them on Instagram every day too when I did. Oh, a little bit of snag here. All right, so I actually glued a whole bracelet onto the card so you can see it's got texture to it. Um, I glued uh, die cut buttons and I glued cardboard buttons that I got in different things and then I glued charms as if it was on a charm bracelet. That one was the most unusual one I did I think. And I didn't want anything to happen to it so that's why I, I really needed to put these in in some kind of a keeper of some sort but it was fun I mean I really enjoyed doing it so I'm going to do it again next uh, this year and I also when I bought those I also bought enough of these that I can do it again this year so my label on the end will say I can 2017 and then I'll write down there 2018 and if I can keep it going until the notebooks fills up then I'll just keep using the same notebook for all the iCADs and I won't have to look anywhere else if I need inspiration I can just go to that notebook and look it up all right this one has nothing on it but I know what's in it I need to put a label on it but still I know what's in it this idea came from Carla at Caged Fish she does a lot of collage I I do collage, but not as much as she does, but never hurts to have supplies. So what she told me she does is she goes through magazines and looks for colors, colors on pages. So then she takes them and puts them into some kind of a keeper and keeps all the colors together. So I put the colored cardstock behind it because I thought it would be more manageable and then if I saw the red page, I knew that these were red images in here. And see, I have some solid colors on one side and then, sorry, then, then um, I did the prints on the back. But not all of them are like that. It's just this. this was a large sheet. Then I have my orange. And if you notice, it's my Roy G. Biv arrangement. <coughs> this is the easiest way for me. I don't know. So there's the orange. And I just find papers that are would make great background for collages. 
and I'll cut little strips or rip little strips off of pages in magazines or books or whatever and put them in here. It's not like cutting regular images. These are strictly for backgrounds. And there they are just in here. So you can use the front and the back. If you wanted to do, like if you wanted to put solid colors in the front and a print, print of those sort of colors on the back, that'd be great. And I, this one, I just love this image. I think this is one of my favorite ones. I found this in a magazine. This is Corks. I just thought that was so cool. And every time I look at it, I think, wow, that must have taken forever to put all those corks like that. And just think of all that wine. <laughs> Somebody had a great time. <laughs> all right, so there's my brown ones. And then I did black and white or print of some sort. This one are, are cream tones, whites, beiges, you know, those kind of colors like that. This one just has calendar pages in here. Then um, Cat Han was talking about using these folders in her stuff. And I really like these folders because it has pockets in it. So I thought that was great. So these are the large ones that are patterned ones that I'm really not sure what to do with, but I could not pass these up. Look at all that. Let's look at the bottom first. How wonderful is that with the card catalog where you pull the drawers out? I'm telling you, that is so wonderful. And then all the ribbons. Just love this picture. It just, it has so much color and character to it. I can't bear to tear it up right now. So anyway, so I just collected things that I thought were interesting patterns in here. And, and you know, they're just all in the back in a mumbo jumbo back here. No, no rhyme or reason to this as usual. All right, so that's in the back. These are how I, I, color, I store the color stuff. As you can see, it's not very thick. I probably could use a thinner notebook, but you know, this is it for now. I think I had this notebook on hand and didn't want to go out and buy another notebook. I just swapped some stuff around it, ended up with an empty notebook and put it in there. All right, so this last one, or the next one, <laughs> has this giant arrow on here because I'm a goober. And every time I pull this off the shelf without the arrow on it, I inevitably dump stuff out on the floor. And I got tired of dumping stuff out, so I put the arrow on here to remind me, this is up, and this going this way, the other way, is a disaster. So that's why I put the arrow on there. I know what's in here. These are my um, die cuts, extra die cuts, bits and pieces of other projects that I didn't want to get rid of because I really like them. You guys saw this in the photo paper. Jeez, uh, I hate the glare on here. The photo paper jelly session that I did where I did the doodle flowers on the jelly on the photo paper. So that's what this one is. Then there's just all kinds of miscellaneous miscellaneous things in here like envelopes, large and small, a ton of cardboard die cuts, you know, that kind of stuff that you you do too many of or somebody gives you something and you can't bear to part with it. I, I do keep things like that. Now I used, um, this one had a bunch of hearts in it and I used this in, used up all the hearts on a glue book. And so now I have an empty place, which I am happy about. The less stuff I have in here, the happier I am. Uh, some of these guys have been in here a while. So anytime I can use a die cut and not have to whip out the cuddle bug and I have what I need in here, I'm good to go. These all say thank you. Let's put my hand underneath there. These all say thank you. What a pain to pick all those little things out. So I saved them because I was not going to do this again anytime soon. And like I said, it's just miscellaneous items that I didn't want to get rid of. And here's more of the baseball card protectors. In the back, I use the same photo, the 4x6 photo ones, to store the larger images that I, I just couldn't get rid of. There's butterfly, tons of butterflies in there. When I made cards, I would, and I was newish at doing this, I would do a bunch of stuff like this where I did cut out the scallop and then cut out the oval to go on it and I ended up saving them because I just 
I thought, wow, I put all that work into it, and now I still don't use them. But, you know, I hang on to them. That's the crafter way. Then there's um, uh, embossed images. Like, these are all East, well Easter eggs, swirls, that kind of stuff. That could be used in mixed media later. And I do, just because it's in the binder doesn't mean I don't use them. Because the binder's real close to where I sit. So anytime I need something, I dig through here. These are flower parts, window seals, windows. These are just miscellaneous items that I put into sheet protectors. And these are strips of scrapbook paper that need to be glued onto some kind of a surface. So that's those. All right, so let me get the other thing that I store stuff in. It's a, it's kind of bulky. Okay, so the other two ways that I stored, or the same way but two different items that I stored scraps is, scraps are, I bought these 12 by 12 accordion style keepers. This one's labeled scrapbook scraps. This is scrapbook paper scraps, and again, I, oh, I pulled the labels off. I did the Roy G. Biv, and on each label I put the colors, and then at the back I did print, printed items, like printed scrapbook paper that didn't, you know, had 55 colors on it and didn't really fit in one of the colored pockets. And that was really nice for the longest time. But unfortunately, the sides, and I just split the side right now, the sides split open on them. Oh, where's my hand? The sides split open. And I didn't find that especially funny when I had to pick up all that stuff off the floor. I did the scrapbook paper that way, and I also did cardstock that way. I divided it up the exact same way with the labels on each one of the tabs. And I found it really annoying, like I said, when the sides would split. One of these has, one of these guys has duct tape on it. Or some kind, see? Because <laughs> I, I was not amused when it popped open. All right, so these are from Nicole Classic. So I emptied those out, and I watched... Let me get one of these as an example. I'll do this one. I watched Jennifer McGuire. She's a card maker. And I watched her do her annual... She does her storage annual favorite whatevers every year. And so I watched it, like, this year. And she stores her cardstock in these are called job tickets this is what um, your mechanic puts your ticket in when you go to take your car and to have it worked on let's see what size are these uh, ruler it is the inside is 12 and across it's like nine and a quarter nine inches, somewhere like that. Nine by 12. I think that's what it's supposed to be. And I was like, wow, that's an awesome thing. So since I had so much cardstock from making cards and like 10,000 colors from buying those multi-packs, what was I thinking? Um, I put my cardstock here and I divided up all my colors from my cardstock and put them in these tickets and then I put those inside magazine holders according to the color. Yes, I divide stuff up by color everywhere I go. <laughs> All right, so that's that. And then I thought, well, if that works for that, so I'm going to take out all of my scrapbook paper scraps and uh, cardstock scraps and I'm going to do the same thing for those. So that's what I did. I took all the scraps out of those accordion holders file holders, labeled my, uh, this says red, labeled these, and then put all my scrapbook scraps in here. It won't fit a 12 by 12 in here, but it'll do a 6 by 12. And I put them inside here, and then I put that inside one of these extra wide kind of plastic holder things. I don't know exactly what this is called, but it, I, mean, I don't want to tip this over and spill this stuff out because it'll make me crazy. Um, it has a handle on it on both sides and then it's, you know, it's got the stuff this way. So whenever I want to use scrapbook paper that's scraps, they're all in order here and I store them in this giant holder. I have 
scrapbook scraps in here, and I put my cardstock scraps in here, and it is so fat and so full that, well, let me turn it sideways, that I can barely get stuff in and out of here. So this tells me I have too much stuff. I try not to generate more scraps because honestly, it's a little ridiculous that I'm saving all this stuff and I don't know if there's any hope I'll ever use it. But, you know, I have that mentality. I spent money on it so I can't get rid of it. And there they all are. So they're in folders. They're not falling on the floor. I keep it on the desk so it's really close to where I am and it's very handy to use. Um, so that's basically how I store all my leftovers. I don't think, other than storing my cardboard in Linus, those refrigerator Linus containers, well, hang on a second. Let me go get it and show it to you.